to the sanctuary. Today's message is called Dream Cancers. When God created us, He implanted His dream in our hearts. He said in Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good, not for disaster, to give you a future and hope. Ephesians 2, 10 says, For we are God's masterpieces. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus, so we can do good things He planned for us long ago. 1 Corinthians 2, 9 says, No eyes have seen, no ears have heard, and no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love Him. That's our future and hope. A person is not poor because they don't have money. He is poor because he doesn't have a dream. A why? Do you have a dream? If you don't, maybe you're going to head someplace where you don't want to go. What would, you, what would it take to prevent you from getting stuck in a rut, doing the same old things over and over and over again, not moving forward to realize your dreams? Nothing significant is accomplished until you start dreaming. God has given us the opportunity to be transformed while He works in us and through us. God gave the ability, us the ability to create, to imagine, to dream impossible dreams. God wants to bless us. That's a guarantee. He wants to make our dreams come true, but it requires that we obey Him in everything that we do, all of His commandments. If you're dreaming dreams that don't reflect God's purposes for you, you're missing out on the life that He wants you to live. True success is knowing your purpose, your reason, your why, and passionately pursuing it. Psalm 37, 3 and 5 says, Trust in the Lord and do good. Then you will live safely in the land and prosper. Take delight in the Lord and He will give you your heart's desire. Commit everything you do for the Lord. Trust Him and He will help you. If we completely trust, obey and commit our dreams to the Lord and do good, He will help us and He will protect us and He will prosper us and provide everything that we need. Doesn't that sound like a good deal? It does to me. Purpose and passion are key factors. If you are serious about achieving your dream, it takes these two things. It's all, it's at the very core of our pursuit. Without purpose and passion, you'll just waste your time and energy on something less than what God has planned for you. Think about it. If you didn't have to be concerned about money, what would you be doing today? Here's a fact. Okay, One of the um, main reasons why um, your dreams are stealed of stolen. It says, generally speaking, about 53% of recent college graduates cannot find a job in their field of studies after obtaining a bachelor's degree. The average student loan debt per bar is $33,000. Total, okay, total loan debt is $1.52 trillion. Number of student loan borrowers, here it is, 44.7 million are in debt today. Oh, my Lord. Okay. Can you imagine spending and borrowing money to get a college degree so you can have the opportunity to get a better education, hopefully to get a better job and career, only to discover the reality that finding a job in, in your particular major, okay, you can't find it, and you still have a student loan to pay off. That's one of the realities many face today. There are other factors that will steal your dreams. They will steal your passion, there was still your purpose in life. And this can be the re very reason why too many people settle for the settle for life. If you take a look like American Idol, The Voice, America's Got Talent, Master Chef, many share that what they do for a living, but they wanted something more. They wanted to pursue their dreams and their passions in the entertainment field or you know, being a, a chef. Okay, they were sick and tired of just a daily routine of just going through the motions. Remember this, no dream, no purpose, no passion, no direction, no vision, no action. Proverbs 29, 18 says, okay, where there is no vision, people perish. Your dream is your reason, your why. Okay, it's what you strive for. This is what keeps you going every single day. Vision key gives us direction and what we need to do to achieve our dreams. When it is God's dream and your vision, it always comes with His provision. Remember that. Who God guides, He provides. God will not give us a dream without the, without the vision of what He wants us to do 
and to accomplish, and you know, he, he will accomplish his dreams through us, and he will give us the provisions and the resources that we need. It's just like he wants you to build a house, but he doesn't give you the resources. There's no rule. Okay, there's no blueprint. There's no wood. There's no... Uh, God, when he gives a vision, he will provide everything that you need. Whatever your dreams are, big or small, it will require passion. Okay? Passion to achieve them. It changes a good to have to a must have. When I was a ticket agent in, uh, at Aloha Airlines many, many years ago, okay, when people walked up to me at the, at, the, uh, at the ticket desk, my first question was, where do you want to go? Okay? And what time do you want to leave? If you said, I don't know, whatever, and you look at that and says, you know what, it's not a good answer. <coughs> it, can, it would help if we knew where you're going so we can get you there. So what are some, okay, what are some common dream cancers? We're all aware of that disobedience is a major dream stealer, a deal breaker, a deadly dream cancer. When we disobey God, it robs us of the dreams and visions that God desires to bless us with. Action, another less noticeable dream cancer is procrastination. Okay, the action of delaying or postponing something. You get one of these days, manana, Mumbai, all of that. Your dreams are just potentials. They're just, they're not guaranteed unless you passionately go after your, them consistently. Okay, that's really important. The word is consistently. There are many other personal reasons why many don't achieve their dreams. But most of them are just excuses anyway. And most, in the most part, excuses are useless. Okay? When God gives you a dream, okay, you will find a way to make it happen. <coughs> if we want to prosper, we must decide to include God okay, as we go after our dreams. Okay? Here, Psalms 127.1 says, I love this. Unless the Lord builds a house, a dream, okay, the builder labor, the builders labor in vain. Proverbs six nineteen says, "We make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps." Again, uh, Proverbs uh, sixteen three: Commit your actions to the Lord, and your plans will succeed. What guarantees? Fear is another one. Second Timothy one seven says, "For the spirit, for the spirit that that the Lord gave us, okay." Has given us does not make us timid. Instead, his spirit fills us with power and love and self-control. Sometimes we just have to decide to risk it. It's called faith. It's trusting God. Remember when, when Jesus okay, called the disciples to step out of a boat in the middle of a huge storm. Okay? Only Peter obeyed and did the impossible with, with Jesus. Remember this. Miracles happen. Dreams are accomplished when you step out in faith. Okay? When you walk on water with Jesus, you'll always succeed. Another cancer is waiting for the perfect time. Ecclesiastes 11.4 says, If you wait for the perfect conditions, you'll never, you'll never get anything done. Are we waiting for another confirmation from God? Many times God will call you when it's most inconvenient. In the middle of what you're doing, He calls you to do something else. Been there. For example, He called a fisherman. Okay, to be his first disciples. All they knew was how to fish for a living until Jesus came and said that you will be fishers of men. They dropped everything immediately, immediately and followed Jesus. So the question is, what is God calling you to do? And why aren't you answering his call if you're not? How about unforgiveness? Colossians 3.13 says, Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you ha has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. Unforgiveness is a sin that fosters anger and offense and, and you know what, and indifference. You don't care anymore. It stops God from helping you achieve your dreams. Matthew 6, 14 and 15 is key. If you forgive others when they sin against you, your Heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you don't forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Uh-oh. That's a big uh-oh. You, okay, you might have some measure of success, but not the full measure of God desires for you. Forgiveness sets you free to achieve all that God has planned for you. Forgiveness. How about um, inadequacy? 
2 Corinthians 12, 9 and 10 says, he said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So I am glad to boast about my weakness so that the power of Christ can work through me. For when I am weak, I am strong. God can use anyone with a humble heart, the heart of a learner. Okay, God says with him, you will succeed. It's not about your in inadequacy. It's your availability. That's really important. Another one is complacency. Matthew 7, 26 says, Everyone hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who builds his house on the sand. Yes, God wants us to be content, but never, never complacent. Remember this, know what to do, then do what you know. If you don't, then your life is built in quicksand. Eventually, you'll drown in regret. Are you unwilling? Proverbs 13, 4 says, Lazy people want much but get little while the diligent are prospering. Too many people want the easy way out. Okay? Um, they look for paths of least resistance, shortcuts, microwave of results. But the true success is experiencing the pursuit of your dream. It's where you learn to appreciate the process. And that's really important. This is where you learn about your skill, learn about your dreams, and learn about your life. The common factor of all these dream cancers share is, here it is, doubt. Indecision, uncertainty, skepticism. God will always do His part. Our part is to prepare. There are three th truths if you are serious about making your God-given dreams come true. Okay, remember this, nothing worthwhile is easy. It will take hard work, everything that you have. There are no shortcuts. Proverbs 14, 23 says, All hard work brings profit, but mere talk leads only to poverty. So it will take due diligence. It will take verification. It will take research. If you want to prosper at anything, it will take education, gathering information from many sources. You need to have the heart of a learner. There's always something to learn in any, in any profession. Proverbs 4, 5, and 7 says, Learn to be wise okay, and develop good judgment and common sense. I cannot overemphasize this point. Cling to wisdom. She will protect you. Love her and she will guard you. Get wisdom is the most Im important thing you can do. And with your wisdom, develop common sense and good judgment. Again, it will take passion. Colossians 3, 23 and 24 says, Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you're serving. Think about it. Whatever your vocation is, whatever you're doing, it is the Lord that you're serving and you're working for. So when you're passionate, you will make sacrifices that you would not ordinarily make whether it is in your relationships, whether it's in your career, your spiritual maturity, or anything else. God will not give up on his dreams that he gave you. Okay? If he is permanently there, he never changes his mind. He will say, this is what I want for you. Okay, this is how you're going to do it. And I will help you do it. So what's really important is that God created a dream for us to achieve. Ephesians 2.10 says, For God's masterpieces He created anew in Christ Jesus, we can do good that He has planned long ago, before you were born. Okay? He had success in you. What is success? It's called the Holy Spirit. It's called Jesus. It's called God. It calls a purpose, a future, and a hope. Philippians 1 and, 1 and 6 says, I am certain that God, who began the good work within you, will continue His work until it's finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. So no matter what, I don't care if what, your, what uh, your limitations are with God. There's no limitations. You need to fully commit to whatever it takes, no matter what. Why? Because talk's cheap. All talk, no walk, never gets you anywhere. James 1.22 says, don't merely listen to the word, and so deceive yourself. Do what it says. Proverbs 14.23 says, all hard work begins, okay, brings a profit, but mere talk leads to poverty. Lip service doesn't work. You can't realize your dreams if you don't get started. Okay? A journey of a thousand, a thousand, thousand miles starts with the first step. 
Allow the Holy Spirit to lead you and be willing to make small steps at first. And then you start to build momentum. Zechariah 4.10 says, Do not despise this small beginnings, for the eyes of the Lord rejoices to see the work, the work begin. There, are, there was a reason, it's a season in my life, oh, I tell you what, I was getting ready to get ready to get ready to get ready, right? I knew I had to do something, but I made so many excuses because I was getting ready, because I didn't hear God, you know, that kind of stuff. I was more full of doubt and fear instead of this courage and trust and faith in God. I doubted my ability to see things through because I failed so many times in my life, in my career, in my marriage, in, you know, in ministry. Okay, I had to learn to change my mindset to have faith, not fear. Fear will stop you dead in your tracks. So we need, we need to stay focused on God. Deuteronomy 5, 32 and 33 says, So be careful to do what the Lord your God has commanded you. Do not turn aside to the right or to the left. Walk in the way that the Lord your God has commanded you so that you may live and prosper and prolong your days. Can you hear it? Hallelujah with that one. Okay, what a great promise. Stay firmly focused and, and focus and just do what God tells you to do. And God says you will be success. And on top of that, okay, you will enjoy your life. Okay, and enjoy prosperity. How many people work so hard but don't enjoy, okay, their prosperity? The truth, okay, this truth is worth repeating. Remember this, God commands you to reward you. Amen. Are we willing to get out, out of our rut, step up into high levels where God wants us to be? Being, okay, being in a daily rut is like sitting on a rocking chair, go back and forth and back and forth, not getting anywhere fast. There will be times, okay, there's going to be some delays and detours, okay, as we pursue our dreams and pursue our visions. We should, we should factor them in so we, it doesn't derail us. We anticipate them. When you go through the delays in life, don't get discouraged. Don't doubt. Don't fear it. Okay? Don't give up. Don't settle for less than God's best in your life. If that means going through the, a valley of darkness, then go through it with God. In the middle of the valley, it will get really dark and you want to turn around. But you've got to keep on keeping on until you come out on the other side into the light. Psalm 23, 4 says, Even when I th walk through the dark valleys of death, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me, gar uh, gar uh, guarding and guiding all the way. God is always with you. Galatians 6, 9 says, Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Some of you are so close to realizing your dreams, and you know what? The devil is trying to discourage you from keeping on. Don't. God is with you. Okay? This is the law of the harvest, by the way. Okay? This, this is always, there's always a delay between the sowing and the reaping. You plant one season and you reap in another. Growth, strength, maturity happens in between. God's dream may be delayed but never denied. Prayer. Oh, I tell you what. Prayer is a fertilizer that develops strong and deeper roots in your dream. Prayer is so important. John 10.10 10 tells us that the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Okay? In contrast with Jesus, okay? he plans a future and a hope of abundance, of frightful living. One of the crucial areas that the, that the devil would target is to destroy, again, your God-given dreams. If we give up on our dreams, we'll just exist until our time is all gone on earth. If we give up, if we give into our enemies attacks, he will discover that we'll just accept the limitations. It's called faith, F-A-T-E. And wrongly conclude that's all that there is to our life. We can't go any further. Wrong conclusion. God has planned us and given us this power source called faith, F-A-I-T-H, that has no limitations. Paul said in 2 Timothy 4, 7, I fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Too many have given up too soon. Don't let the devil or naysayers steal your dream. Do you have anybody who's tried to steal your dream? We call them naysayers. You can't do this. You can't do that. You're young. You're too old. You do this. You do that. 
when you fail and you will, okay, decide, don't stay there, get up, dust yourself off, and keep on keeping on, no matter what. God, okay, God is for you and with you. Second Chronicles 5, 15, 7, 7 says, But as for you, be strong and do not give up, for your work will be rewarded. That's God saying. 1 Corinthians 15, 58 says, Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. Amen. So here's the bottom line. If you're serious about achieving your God-given dreams, you must develop a mindset that nothing is going to stop you. Absolutely nothing. God has big dreams for you to pursue and to accomplish, and He promises to help you to achieve them. Go figure that. And you will find a way. With the Holy Spirit's wisdom and guidance, He will make a way. So never, ever, ever give up. Galatians. I'll close it with this. Galatians 6, 7, and 10. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please their flesh from, from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the Spirit from the Spirit will re reap eternal life. Let us not be become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Okay, here we go. Faith it until you make it. Amen? Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for the dreams and the passion that you've given us, Father, to accomplish in our life here on earth. Okay, you gave us life, so there is a purpose. Our purpose on earth is to be more like Jesus, to reach other people, to pursue our dreams with the skill set and the passions you give us, to surround us with people who are unsaved and or unchurched so we can be a beacon of light in very dark places so give us eyes that can see heart to can hear father what you are calling us to do go and reach the unsaved okay to increase okay the population of heaven to increase our ohana our forever ohana so father we just thank you that you are with us and with you all things are possible dream cancers no you are the dream maker. You are the miracle worker. And we thank you for that. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Aloha. Aloha. We'll see you next week.